Welcome to Oil for the Journey. My name is Sunny. I am your journey reader for today, you guys. It is day 39 of our 40-day read. Can you believe that? It's been 39 days. Doing everything I can to keep from crying. God is so good and he is so faithful as we are learning to life. We are life and by his word. We are learning to to have our daily lived experiences guided and um, directed by his word. Because that's what it's all about. Jesus told us that without him, we can do nothing. And so I take that to heart. I take that as truth. And I know that without him, I don't live. I don't move. I don't even have the very breath that I'm breathing right now. It is all because of him. He is my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. He saved me so many times, literally, right and figuratively well that's such a thing i have to think on that one later (laughs) but you know god has definitely he's saved my uh spiritual soul you know my spirit my soul from eternal damnation when he died on the cross and i have experienced him for myself in my life and where he has literally saved me from danger. And so, you know, I just thank God that, you know, he tells us we overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. And so, you know, it's not just, it it is about the word is our foundation, but it's also our lived experiences, right? So, y'all, when we talk about life in, we are saying our daily life encounters that require us to expend massive amounts of energy, whether we judge an experience to be good or bad. That life experience requires us to spend ourselves emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, intellectually, and socially. So when we are life in by God's word, we are choosing to trust God and his holy word to lead, guide, direct, redirect, influence, and encourage our daily lived experiences, whether they be good or bad, because to be near God is for our good, and he is trustworthy. All right? So, <laughs> he really is. So I just want to invite you guys, if you want to join me, there's one more day. Tomorrow is Easter Sunday. This is Resurrection Weekend. And it's always, for me, an emotional time. So, you know, I'm not going to apologize for crying, but know that they are tears of joy, tears of gratefulness, tears of just a life. And uh, knowing that I am his daughter, his his precious one. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. And I know that he gives those same opportunities to all of us. And that is my heart for those who don't know him 
to want to come into relationship with him and learning more about him through his word. He reveals himself through his word and and through his word combined with our lived experiences. We come to know him as the great I am, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. So he's existed before time and he exists throughout all time. (laughs) Hey, so I'm inviting you here. You can scan this QR code. I'll fill out the form and I will send you a link. Just one more day. And hey, it it is never too late. So today is day 39 of our 40-day journey, live journey through God's word. And I'm just very grateful. I want to remind you all that we follow the Bridges for Peace, Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. You can sign up at ignitethetruth.com. Okay? You won't be disappointed. So... I just want to encourage you in that. And of course, if you wish to connect with us, feel free to email us at oilforthejourney at gmail.com. And you can connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, X, and YouTube at Oil for the Journey. That's the number four, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget it. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get it started. We are today, we are in the book of first kings but today we're reading chapters three four and five all right and i'm in the new living translation for you guys who want to follow along in this specific translation i pray that everyone has an, had an amazing shabbat today for those who um took the time to just be still and embrace this gift that god has given us of Sabbath, to be able to be still and to just enjoy um, him through whatever he allowed us to do today. (laughs) All right. So let's pray. Father, we just want to say thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Abba, for this time in your presence. Thank you for this day. Lord, you have made it and we rejoice in it, God. We thank you. We give you praise and honor for everything that you allowed. We know that you are good. We pray even for those who may not have had a good day. Lord, I pray and thank you for your peace that surpasses all of their understanding that will guard their hearts and their minds through Christ Jesus. We know that not all are experiencing your love and your joy and your peace, Father God. And and so we just lift them up before you, God. We know that None can come to you unless you first draw their hearts, prepare their hearts. So we're asking God that you prepare their hearts, prepare them to receive you. And we thank you um, for our other brothers and sisters in the world who are on assignment, Lord, who've been in military talk, been deployed, Father, uh, on behalf of the kingdom of God. And I just pray for your continued protection. I pray that you would help us to remain strong and courageous in these latter days, God. I pray, Lord, that you would increase us with wisdom and discernment and understanding, Father, in the name of Jesus and all of our getting, that we get understanding of what you're doing and what you're allowing in this season and how to be prepared, Father. We thank you for this time in your word that you will give insight and strategy and um, just whatever else you need to speak to us, Lord. We thank you and we set ourselves before you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, let's get it started. (laughs) First Kings chapter three. Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and married one of his daughters. He brought her to live in the city of David until he could finish building his palace and the temple of the Lord and the wall around the city. (laughs) At that time, the people of Israel sacrificed their offerings at local places of worship for a temple honoring the name of the Lord had not yet been built. Solomon loved the Lord and followed all the decrees of his father, David, except that Solomon too offered sacrifices 
and burned incense at the local places of worship. The most important of these places of worship was at Gibeon. So the king went there and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings. That night, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. And God said, what do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Solomon replied, you show great and faithful love to your servant, my father, David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued to show this great and faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made me king instead of my father, David, but I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and nu and numerous, they cannot be counted. Give me, under give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or death of your enemies, <laughs> I will give you what you have asked for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart, such as no one else has had or ever will have. And I will also give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands as your father David did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon woke up and realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, where he sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. Then he invited all his officials to a great banquet. Sometime later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my lord, one of them began. This woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There were only two of us in the house. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. She laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was your son and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine and the dead one is yours. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours and each says that the dead one belongs to the other. All right, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, cut the living child in two and give half to one woman and the half to the other. And then the woman who was the real mother of the living child who loved him very much cried out, oh no, my Lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, all right, he will be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. Then the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. When all Israel heard the king's decision, the people were in awe of the king, for they saw the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. First Kings chapter four. King Solomon now ruled over all Israel, and these were his high officials. Azariah, son of Zadok, was the priest. Elihoreth and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, were court secretaries. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. 
Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, was commander of the army. Zadok and Abiathar were priests. Azariah, son of Nathan, was in charge of the district governors. Zabud, son of Nathan, a priest, was a trusted advisor to the king. Ahishar was manager of the palace property. Adorin, Adoniram, son of Abda, was in charge of forced labor. Solomon also had 12 district governors who were over all Israel. They were responsible for providing food for the king's household. Each of them arranged provisions for one month of the year. These are the names of the 12 governors. Ben-Hur in the hill country of Ephraim, ben Dekur in Makaz, Shalbim, Beth Shemesh, and Elam Beth Hanan. Ben Hased in Arubath, including Sako in all the land of Hefer. Ben Abinadab in all of Nafath Dor. He was married to Tifa, one of Solomon's daughters. Bana, son of Ahilud, in Tanakh and Megiddo, all of Benshan near Zarethon, below Jezreel, and all the territory from Beth Shan to Abel Mechola, and over to Jachmiam. Ben Geber and Ramath Gilead, including the towns of Jair, named for Jair of the tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, and in the Ar Argob region of Bashan, including 60 large fortified towns with bronze bars on their gates. Ahinadab, son of Edo, and Mahanaim, Ahimaz, and Naphtali. He was married to ba Basemath, another of Solomon's daughters. Bana, son of Husha, Hushai, and Ashir, and in Aloth. Jehoshaphat, son of Parua, and Issachar. Shemiai, son of Elah, and ben Hamim. Gabriel, son of Uri in the land of Gilead, including the territories of King, King Sihon of the Amorites and of King Og of Bashan. There was also one governor over the land of Judah. The people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They were very contented with plenty to eat and drink. Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River in the north to the land of the Philistines in the border of Egypt in the south. The, con the conquered peoples of those lands sent tribute money to Solomon and continued to serve him throughout his lifetime. The daily food requirements for Solomon's palace were 150 bushels of choice flour, 300 bushels of meal, also 10 oxen from the fattening pens, 20 pasture-fed cattle, 100 sheep or goats, as well as deer, gazelles, roe deer, and choice poultry. Solomon's dominion extended over all the kingdoms west of the Euphrates River from Tephasa to Gaza, and there was peace on all his borders. During the lifetime of Solomon, all of Judah and Israel lived in peace and safety. And from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, each family had its own home and garden. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for his chariot horses, and he had 12,000 horses. The district governors faithfully provided food for King Solomon and his court. Each made sure nothing was lacking during the month assigned to him. They also brought the necessary barley and straw for the royal horses in the stables. That's good. God gave Solomon very great wisdom and understanding and knowledge as vast as the sands of the seashore. In fact, his wisdom exceeded that of all the wise men of the East and the wise men of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, including Ethan, the Esrahite, and the sons of Mahol, Heman, Kalkol, and Darda. His fame spread. His fame spread throughout all the surrounding nations. He composed some 3,000 proverbs and wrote 1,005 songs. Okay. Verse 33. He could speak with authority about all kinds of plants, 
from the great cedar of Lebanon to the tiny hyssop that grows from cracks in a wall. He could also speak about animals, birds, small creatures, and fish. And kings from every nation sent their ambassadors to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. First Kings chapter 5. King Hiram of Tyre had always been a loyal friend of David. When Hiram learned that David's son Solomon was the new king of Israel, he sent ambassadors to congratulate him. Then Solomon sent this message back to Hiram. You know that my father David was not able to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord his God because of the many wars waged against him by surrounding nations. He could not build until the Lord gave him victory over all his enemies. But now the Lord my God has given me peace on every side. Mm. I have no enemies and all is well. So I'm planning to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord my God, just as he had instructed my father David. For the Lord told him, your son, whom I will place on your throne, will build the temple to honor my name. Therefore, please command that cedars from Lebanon be cut for me. Let my men work alongside yours, and I will pay your men whatever wages you ask. As you know, there is no one among us who can cut timber like you Sidonians. When Haram received Solomon's message, he was very pleased and said, praise the Lord today for giving David a wise son to be king of the great nation of Israel. Then he sent this reply to Solomon. I have received your message and I will supply all the cedar and cypress timber you need. My servants will bring the logs from the Lebanon mountains to the Mediterranean Sea and make them into rafts and float them along the coast to whatever place you choose. Then we will break the rafts apart so you can carry the logs away. You can pay me by supplying me with food for my household. So Hiram supplied as much cedar and cypress timber as Solomon desired. In return, Solomon sent him an annual payment of 100,000 bushels of wheat for his household and 110,000 gallons of pure olive oil. So the Lord gave wisdom to Solomon just as he had promised. And Haram and Solomon made a formal alliance of peace. Then King Solomon conscripted a labor force of 30,000 men from all Israel. He sent them to Lebanon in shifts, 10,000 every month, so that each man would be one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adar Niram was in charge of this labor force. Solomon also had 70,000 common laborers, 80,000 quarry workers in the hill country, and 3,600 foremen to supervise the work. At the king's command, they quarried large blocks of high quality stone and shaped them to make the foundation of the temple. Men from the city of Gebal helped Solomon's and Hiram's builders Prepare the timber and stone for the temple. Wow, that's the end of today's reading. <laughs> this, um, wow, this this is easy peasy right here, y'all. Just simple. This uh, prayer that Solomon prayed as he was um, preparing to take over and lead and govern the people. I think it's a prayer that we can all pray. And I can you can see that it sort of kind of set the foundation and the tone for his uh for his time for the time while he ruled while he governed all of Israel. So what later became the divided kingdom, the northern and the southern territory, under Solomon's rule, they were one. So under David and Solomon, they were one kingdom. And so here. In chapter 3, verse 9, he says, Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. 
for who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours. That right there was just humility, right? These are key ingredients, character ingredients for doing anything, any position, whether we're king or we're, you know, servants or head of servants or wherever God places us. We need to understand that by ourselves, we are unable to govern, right? And it's not about having advisors and all these things, but it's about having the Lord head of our lives and allowing him and his word to instruct us and guide us and lead us and direct us and redirect us, all these things, right? Whatever word we choose. <laughs> There's a plethora. But I'm thankful because it said the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So this is wisdom when we're asking for understanding, an understanding heart so that we can govern, not just people, but govern our own lives, right? So that's that's the first life that we are in charge of is ourself. How are we governing? How are we governing <laughs> ourselves? And, and to know that it is God who helps us. He gives us wisdom liberally. He said we can ask of him for it to uh, ask of him who gives it to us freely, right? And so the thing is to understand that we can't even govern ourselves accordingly. We might think we can. We might be think we're doing okay and we're doing good. But to understand that all of this, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. And so, you know, Solomon had it, right? That he was like, God, I need you. I need you to help me. Even in his youth, right? He was like, I need you to help me. I can't do this by myself. I am unable to govern these people on my own. I need you. And so even in, you know, learning how to maintain and keep good relationships, right? <laughs> like the, the relationship with Haram. And so because of that, even Haram noticed, he was like, you know, Solomon's got wisdom. Whoa, praise. He said, praise the Lord. We don't know if Haram believed in uh, God and Hashem, but, you know, he said, praise the Lord, because the Lord has, you know, given David a wise son to lead Israel. And so he was more than pleased um, because Solomon respected him. He was more than pleased to give Solomon what he needed to accomplish the task that had been given to him. And in exchange, he said, this is all I'm asking for. And Solomon's like, sure thing. I will gladly give you food. He was just like, I just need food for my household, you know? And Solomon gave it to him. So, you know, it's, what can we learn, you know, from this? How can we apply this story even to our own lives? Are the questions, one of the questions we can ask and ask of the Lord and say, God, show me. Um, increase me with wisdom so I will know how to govern my own life, right? Not even um, let alone the lives of others if you have children, dependents, you know, uh, family members. You know, we all have family members, immediate, dependent, whatever. <laughs> but it all, it starts with us and our relationship with the Lord. So, Father, I thank you for this time in your word. And I, I do ask you, God, that you would um, pour out your wisdom and grant us understanding, even as Solomon prayed, grant us under an understanding heart so we will know how to govern the lives that you've given us, ourselves, and if we have sons and daughters, nieces and nephews, you know, friends, family, spouses, people who, who you allow us to influence one way or another. Lord, we need your wisdom because we cannot do it without you. Even everyday decisions that we need to make for ourselves, they're better when we first consult you. So I thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. I pray, Lord, that we would not forget to seek you, Lord, all day, not just early in the morning, but we need to be seeking you and keeping our ears attuned to you all day, Daddy. 
So I pray for this even now in the name of Jesus for your children. Where there needs to be clarity, give clarity. Where the clouds need to be removed, Daddy, please remove the clouds, the confusion. In the name of Jesus, let it be understood what is your good, pleasing, and perfect will for your children. Help them to understand that it is your will. Your will is good. It is also pleasing. It is also perfect. So I pray, God, that you help us to understand what is your will for our everyday lives and how to do it your way. Even as we are seeking to reconcile or be reconciled, Lord, whatever it is we are in need of, I thank you, Lord, that you do give us everything we need pertaining to life. Bless your children even now, Daddy. Give them rest as they lay their heads down and prepare to celebrate your resurrection. Thank you for overcoming evil and death and sharing that gift of salvation with us. Bless us now, God, and allow us to continue to bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, family. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, it's been an amazing 39 days, and tomorrow is day 40. So I hope to see you. If not, you can catch the archive. And... Um, Oh, yeah, I think I'll be a little, a little tardy tomorrow. <laughs> I love you all with the love of the Lord. Thank you so much uh, here for being here again. And we'll see you tomorrow. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>